Hey there, smartphone fans. Welcome back for another episode of Phone Tech Talk. And today I will be discussing Qualcomm's next generation uh, mid range to high end chip, and it's the Snapdragon 670. There's a bit of information out on it, and I want to really delve on it because I think this will be the best smartphone chip in 2018. So if you're interested to know everything I know about the Snapdragon 670, keep watching and as always you'll find out. So the Snapdragon 670 aims to continue the really uh, great legacy that the Snapdragon 660 left, uh, which was a really powerful chip, yet very efficient, yet did really good gaming. Uh, and this year Qualcomm will introduce a new kind of uh, scheme to it because the Snapdragon 660 had four big cores and four small cores but this time Qualcomm have done a different configuration and I think it's really the best way to go here. Uh, Qualcomm have done the Snapdragon 670 on the new 10 nanometer fabrication process so this chip will be uh, a lot smaller than the Snapdragon 845 and the 835 and it will have just two very high clocked crate gold cores, which is based on the new A75, and six, that's right, six additional A55 cores based on the cryo architecture called the cryo silver. Why is this very important for you? And uh, because the CPU and general performance and power consumption are really dependent on those smaller cores. So 95% of the time, what you're doing is like opening social media, checking browsing and stuff like that. And that's when only the small cores are activated because it's not a very heavy workload for the phone. Um, and this means the Snapdragon 670 will be super fast because the new A55 architecture brings around 15 to 20% performance improvement over the A53, which are used in the previous generation of Snapdragon phones and pretty much every phone. Uh, last year and the year before uh, at the same power envelope. So you'll get 15% uh, more performance at the same battery in life, which is really, really great, guys. Another key area besides that performance for the same power envelope is heat dissipation because those smaller cores, the A55 is like three times smaller than the big, uh, than the big cores, the A75 and the A73 before that. Uh, the phone will stay super cool. That means it will give even longer battery life and it will be even better for gaming. So this means gaming will draw even less power. Um, the two big gold cryo cores in there will be the highest clock ones in the chip, which will should be around 2.4, 2.6 gigahertz on that chip. And they will be able to keep that high frequency sustained for long periods of time and again, deliver excellent performance because they have an improved 15-20% performance with the same power usage over the A73 so you really won't be missing that much. There is already a benchmark out and the first Snapdragon 670 phone uh, is actually from a company that most of you have not heard of uh, probably if you don't live in Asia especially in China and Japan and it's 360. It's a uh, uh, of company that offers, uh, always tries to offer the best phone for around $300 um, and the latest phone will come in the Snapdragon 670 and that's where we have the latest and only actual Geekbench benchmark and it's astounding because the Snapdragon 670 is able to reproduce um, almost as good uh, performance as the Snapdragon 835 uh, on a much smaller chip so this is something really outstanding so you won't be missing any performance out with the Snapdragon 670 over the Snapdragon 835 what about graphics performance? And uh, something that really concerns all of you because I know you want to play PUBG mobile on the ultra graphic settings in ultra frame rate modes. Uh, and that's just why the new Adreno 615 graphics comes in. First of all, it's uh, Qualcomm sixth generation of graphics chip and it will pack all the latest features uh, like it will support Vulkan, uh, it will support the latest API, it will be an improved shader architecture, it will be definitely improved in power savings as well uh, and so because of the number that Snapdragon 845 comes with a 630 you should have it like 50% less performance because that's how Qualcomm usually does things than the Adreno 630 which is definitely 
not bad. The figures might sound like well half the performance, but uh, there really isn't anything to actually stress out the Adreno 630, and this still gives you around 20% uh, less than the Adreno 540 found in the Snapdragon 835. So it will still be enough to run all the latest mobile games this year and probably next year on the ultra graphic settings uh, without really needing a faster chip. So I think Snapdragon 670 phones will be definitely even more worth to buying than Snapdragon 845 phones out there because you will get better battery life, because you will get a cooler chip and you roughly get the same performance, definitely the same CPU performance and very very close to the same graphics performance and definitely enough to run all the latest games at the very highest level of frame settings. So another area that the Snapdragon 670 will be better than the Snapdragon 660 is it will have a newer modem which means uh, slightly more download and slightly more upload speed which is always yay and always a plus. And it, it will have an upgraded uh, DSP which is a digital signal processor which means it will take better photos than Snapdragon 660 device to allow developers to get more power and cram more megapixels, make the shutter speed faster make the color production faster and it does bring that um, AI technology into it uh, because it can uh, recognize images and apply certain fault filters to it but that's really it so again as I said in one of my previous videos uh, the new phone AI is just a gimmick it's not real artificial intelligence it's basically just a mathematical algorithm that's meant for the camera to recognize real life images which is really cool but like really far-fetched from artificial intelligence I've already told you that the 360 N7 is coming out with the Snapdragon 670 uh, maybe in like 2-3 weeks time because it already is passing full certification as we speak and the next few days you'll probably get the full specs. So um, my thoughts on the matter is that perhaps the first Snapdragon 670 phones that will come will not be by Samsung or by Sony because they usually skip this chip uh, but it will definitely be with a lot of Chinese devices usually uh, LG, HTC and the rest really don't offer the Snapdragon 660, 670 chips because uh, they're very close to what the high-end offerings are offering and they really want you to buy those uh, so that, that's why they always leave a big gap between their mid-range and their high-end devices so if you're looking for a Snapdragon 670 phone by Sony, LG or Samsung, uh, you probably won't be it. But uh, if you're willing to take a gamble on the 360 on an Oppo and or on a Vivo phone, I'm pretty sure that um, Meizu probably and Xiaomi will also do a Snapdragon 670 phone. So this will be the companies that will actually be targeting this chip uh, and not like the big guns. Uh. So this has been it for my uh, detailed preview of the Snapdragon 670. I hope you like what you see. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for continuing to support my work. Do share my videos and tell your friends to come here for the latest and most detailed explanations of smartphone technology and honest hands-on reviews. And if you're a new guy and you like what you're seeing, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more. This has been Stephen Fox. Thank you for watching and peace out.